Hi everyone, welcome to Cloud Guard Network Security for Azure Virtual WAN the video on onboarding. Um, so, so some quick assumptions, working knowledge of Azure Virtual WAN, access to an Azure subscription, that you have an existing checkpoint security management deployed, whether traditional or using the smart one cloud service. Um, 81 R81.10 and R81.20 um, putting into version is going to be the best one for you. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is actually create the virtual WAN. And we go to marketplace for that, search for virtual WAN, and go ahead and create. You're going to see me create all of my objects, all of my resources in the same resource group in West Central US. I'll give it a name. This part is pretty straightforward. There are two versions we use the standard type. Once, you, once the VWAN is deployed, we're going to go ahead and create a hub. Um, as we're waiting for this to finish up, and it's already done, um, like I said before, there, there are going to be many, many different versions and, and styles of, of, of architectures. This is a pretty basic onboarding, as you will see, but uh, you will find many, many more things out on the web for this. And... Um, Resources, resources in the wiki, resources within Teams, etc. So we need to create a new hub. Go to name. And it's own private address space. The recommendation or the example there is a slash 16. I just did that to follow that example. Pick your hub capacity. This is going to be the overall sizing. This will be a discussion you'll need to make with the architect as you're designing your solution. We don't get into the details here for this, for the purposes of this training. Also, same for setting up site to site. Connections, point to site connections, express route, etc. Tags. We don't really touch any of that as part of this video. Once that's all set, we go ahead and create. And this will take up to 30 minutes. I did chop this down quite a bit in the video, so it should go much, much faster. But it, it, this part will take a while in real life. Deployment is complete. Go back and find my VWAN configuration. Go to the hub. And one thing I'm going to point out here is that even though it's created, it's still in a provisioning state. And so you need to wait for that provisioning status to go to, um, I think it says, I think it's ready, ready or succeeded before you can proceed and that's a provision, there you go. You need to wait for that to go to provision before you go to the next step, so that's really a key piece. If you don't, you'll get errors. And the next step, I believe, if I remember right, is we're gonna deploy the checkpoint NVA um, into the hub. So we go back to the marketplace, search for checkpoint, and one of the marketplace options is the specific item for the integration with Azure Virtual WAN. The only version or the only option right now is NGTP. I believe they will have NGTX at GA as well. And you may be seeing this at GA, so you might have options there. Once again, use the same region. 
the application name is just the managed application name. Not super critical that this be anything in particular. Just something that's descriptive. Select your VN hub. And the NVA name itself. And the scale units to match pretty much what you you decided for the the hub definition before as far as scale unit size. We're going to do two. The BGP ASN if we're going to do BGP attachments. In my case we're not and for the purposes of this video. And you may or may not need a key already. Either have one created for you or you provide one to Azure. For authentication purposes, you can choose between 8110 and 8120. Those are the two only two versions supported. Pay as you go is the only option. Provide the SIC key. Because so we will be adding the NVA objects. In our case, there'll be two of them into a security management server. Accept the terms. And create. This part can also take a little while. I believe I also chopped this down to save time on the video. So once again, you just have to be a little bit patient. So we're going to go back into the hub. And you should see now that we have the NVA defined. There it is. If you click on the instances info, click here, you'll see the two skill units that we've defined and their IP addresses. Those are the two IP addresses we will use to define them in our smart console. You'll see me walk through this process for each one here. Just to summarize, you'll see the, you know, giving them names, using that public IP address as their main IP, and then disabling spoofing. Um, at the end of the day, they're just a bump in the wire. There's really not much to configure, which is kind of nice. They're just doing their job. They're just doing the security aspects. And you're, we're just steering traffic to them. Apply that sick key that we provided earlier. I'll repeat these steps for the other one. Here you can see me disabling anti-spoofing, as I mentioned. And repeat the steps for the second. NVA.
we will have the ability to do a lot of this automatically using the CME that is on the short term roadmap. It's a lot of the, the point and click adding of gateways will be automated in the near in the near future to make this process a lot simpler and quicker. But for now this is the, the process. Go and do a polish for good measure. We're going to create a dummy policy just for the purposes of the video. We're not actually going to send any traffic through. We're just doing an onboarding here. So this is just kind of showing you the basic steps. And as you saw there, in case it wasn't clear, each NVA is an independent gateway. It is not a cluster. Um, if you really want to know about the, the back end configuration, they're just sitting behind a, an Azure load balancer. And as you can see here, you know, there's a number of different ways or different things to connect into the, the virtual WAN hub to make use of the NVAs. Um, the simplest use case is to simplify all of your virtual network connections, your VNet connections and your mesh configurations and not having to do it all manually and or through scripting or whatever you have configured to do to create the uh, interconnections, the hub. So now we're going to add a couple of VNets into the hub. And once those are added into the VUAN hub, we can then configure the routing intent to make use of the, of the NVAs. Not to repeat myself over and over again, but before this um, before V1 Hub existed, you'd have to do a lot of the stitching together manually and the steering of traffic manually into you know a, a security VNet for inspection. It was a lot more manual. So I've added the two VNets into the hub. And technically into the, into the VLAN itself. And then now that they're in the VLAN definition, I can go into the hub and instruct them where to go. under routing and the routing intent and routing policies section. So for internet traffic, we're gonna say going to the NVA, network virtual appliance, same for private traffic. So all traffic coming from, anything coming into the, to the hub is gonna go through the checkpoint NVA configuration and get inspected properly. Um, I think I do go and show you an example of what uh, the effective routes look like. I, I did drop a, 
a virtual machine into one of these VNets to give you an idea what that would look like. So we'll see that here in a second. If you wanted to make changes, just go back to into that routing intent. Make your changes if you needed to. Here's that here's that um, virtual machine. That's actually the interface attached to that virtual machine. Yep. And if you click on effective routes, you will see all the internal network routes and the default route going to the NVA definition. Essentially, the the virtual IP associated with those NVAs. Twelve point four is the the virtual IP of the load balancer. Five and six are the actual IPs associated to the the, the NVA appliances. Thanks for your time, everyone. Hopefully this was inform or informative. Take care. Now, don't forget to check out uh, Checkmates when you get a chance to have questions. Thank you.